I am Ryback. Welcome to Wrestling Days. So this week's Raw, uh, oh, where to start? Um, I would say this is my favourite Raw of the year. Um, and that might come as a surprise for those of you that follow my Twitter. Uh, because I kind of slated it quite a bit. I'm not saying it's the best Raw of the year saying it's my favourite and the reason that I'm saying it's my favourite is because there is so many ways that you can look at this Raw. Uh, really you, you can't be wrong, you could have watched this and thought it was fantastic, you could have watched it and thought it was average, you could have watched it and thought it was appalling um, and I can see arguments for all three. For me it was uh, underwhelming, um, it's, last night I said it was poor. On reflection, I think that's a bit harsh. Um, I think that there is certainly uh, enough talking points coming out of it to uh, make it average uh, or underwhelming. Uh, I certainly don't put it in the uh, good, great uh, bracket. But um, yeah, I want to break it all down, go through it all, uh, tell you what my thoughts are, and uh, I'd love to hear from you guys because, as I said, this is a it's a fascinating one. So the show opens up with Shane and he looks horrifically awkward, uh, sweat coming down his face, he's tripping over his words, he's throwing in a few swear words to kind of knock it back, you know, the crowd seem a little bit lost in it all. Uh, the Chicago crowd seemed very, very quiet all throughout Raw as well, um, really weren't getting many chants together. We heard a few at the start, obviously when Vince came out there was uh, an asshole chant, there was a CM Punk chant. Uh, but really there wasn't there wasn't a great deal after that but this first uh, segment Shane looked really awkward um, don't know if he was feeling a bit under the weather because as I said he, he was sweating um, don't know if it was nerves uh, but it didn't it didn't click for me and also uh, the main point I want to get across on this they're focusing on the wrong part of the story the story is not the relationship between Vince and Shane it's an element of it but the story is about Shane running Monday Night Raw. So everything should be about what's going wrong with Raw, what Shane's going to do to improve it, you know, what McMahon thinks about all of that. Not this, here's a picture of you and me as, you know, when you was a kid and I took you to your first match and I'm going to throw it on the floor and break it. And I don't care. I, I, I mean, are you of the opinion that Vince and Shane are best pals, father and son, going to watch baseball together of a weekend? Because I'm certainly not. I seem to remember some uh, hellacious matches that these two have had in the past. Um, at no point do I think that they're, they've got a fantastic relationship. So the fact that they're kind of selling this on the breakdown of Vince and Shane just is crazy. Um, they should be focused on Monday Night Raw and who's going to run it after WrestleMania and that whole bigger picture. I do not care about a photo. I do not care about a picture. This this did nothing for me. And then when he sent down the security and they get into the ring one by one, you just go in, where were these people trained? That That is not how you would deal with this situation. Uh, the the beatdown that Shane was giving to the security guards I just didn't think looked that that good it didn't fill me with confidence for Wrestlemania I'm not down on Shane whatsoever you know go back watch my videos of when uh, when he first arrived on the scene and you'll see I was as excited as anybody and I still am I am still on board with all of this but they dropped the ball uh, on this week's Raw for me because they focused on the wrong storyline that led us straight into Neville versus Kevin Owens, and uh, for me, this is my favourite match of the year. Uh, I didn't talk about it much last night, but um, watching it back again today, the spots in this match. That shooting star press from Neville, where he's on the top, backwards flip onto the outside. You know, I mean, it, even um, KO uh, does one off the top rope. There's, there's just spots littered all throughout this match. Um, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful match to watch. Um, they work so well together, and I, I honestly can't think of a match that I've enjoyed uh, more than when I uh, watched it back this morning. Um, so, credit where it's due. I, I really, really enjoyed the match. Hated the finish. Uh, thought that it was a cheap finish, a cheap roll-up. Uh, this was a pay-per-view quality match with a 
just, I mean, not even an indie level finish. You know, it's the kind of thing that just TNA would be booking. It was, it was, it was poor. Uh, just a roll of, out of nowhere. There's no reason why KO um, Neville couldn't have kicked out. I mean, Neville was implying that KO had got his trunks and whatnot, but I don't know. It just, it just took all the momentum out of it. The beatdown then delivered by KO wasn't that aggressive. Uh, he was going to do a slam, a power slam on uh, Neville on the outside onto the ring apron. And then uh, Sami Zayn came out. Um, good little moment, but little moment. This is my other frustration with this Raw. You've you've got now, you've wasted a Shane appearance for me. You know, that, that story didn't really further anymore. Um, there was just a load of here's a picture I'm going to throw it on the floor you're dead to me blah de blah de blah but if you're going to debut Sami Zayn you need to do it like they did on NXT with Samoa Joe I mean KO was destroying Sami Zayn for a good several minutes and then out came Samoa Joe I mean Kevin Owens just what 30 seconds beat down on uh, Neville didn't even really do anything that bad and then out comes Sami Zayn um Still great to see him. Still, you know, where he belongs. Uh, really excited to see where this is going. And where is this going? Is it going to be Zayn against Owens? Are we going to see a ladder match? I'd hope a ladder match because I really want to see Neville in the mix. Otherwise, I just think he's going to be the forgotten guy again. Um, so I'd really like to see a ladder match. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't mind a one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe they do like a triple threat or a fatal four-way. Um, you get the feeling that Miz is going to get involved somehow. Next we had a backstage segment and the only thing I want to mention about this is Steph was saying she doesn't remember Survivor Series from a few years ago. Kind of thought that was really disrespectful because I'm sure she does. Of course she does. But, um, you know, the fact that that was a major storyline, one of the biggest they've run uh, in the past few years. Very similar to what we're going through now with the whole end of the authority. Um, and seeing as team won, Ziggler being the last man standing, the authority went for two weeks and then came back. Um, we could find that happening with WrestleMania if Shane wins, go they go away for a few weeks and then they come back. Um, but it's just the fact that you know they're referencing a storyline that you know they're saying no, I don't remember it. It's just like, well, what's the what's the point of the network then? You've got all this good quality stuff, and now you're just saying it's not important and and it didn't matter anyway. You know, good going, well done, Steph. Next we had Brie against Summer Rae. This match was truly awful, like, just awful. Um, just, just like it looks as if like Summer Rae's trying to swim in the ring, trying to claw away from like Brie Bella, who's like dragging her by her legs. It was just, you know catty and screamy and it was just oh, it was terrible Lana came out anyway uh, dressed in like her Ziggler attire when she was with Ziggler she wasn't in her business suit and I can understand why because of what she did in the ring um, but it still wasn't you know a wrestling attire uh, but she came down um, she beat down on uh, Brie looked really good doing it actually and and there was some lovely little moments from Lana where when, from once she'd finished she went over and she kind of went as if to wave just kind of a nah, I can't be bothered and then left I kind of really liked that um, and like even when she went to pick up her shoes you know she, she kept her legs straight bent down and you know she was giving it all of that um, I, 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 I'm, I'm like Lana I think that she knows how to work the crowd properly um, I just wish that she could play the backstage politics game a little better than what she has so far. And next we had Ambrose who came out and cut a really poor promo. I thought they, they obviously just let him talk and he was talking about how he's going to get Hunter to buy him a new suit and he's going to have new shoes and he doesn't really want to do what a champion has to do and uh, he'd be really good at talking to kids and oh, it, was just, it was a ramble. It was, and it was just like... Could have could have done something a bit better with that time, um, and all it did was just set up a match later for him against Bray. Uh, bit bit pointless to tell the truth. Ziggler against League of Nations. So uh, I'm more. This match was okay. It was good to see Ziggler have the odds stacked against him, uh, rather than him just jobbing out to the Miz or something like that. Uh, you know, it was a three on one. Um, kind of rooting for Ziggler, but then equally I didn't want him to win because. It just wouldn't be right, would it? You know, Sheamus, King Barrett, Rusev can't all lose to Ziggler. That's that's a bit out there. So uh, I think it was the right result for the League of Nations to win. Uh, Ziggler looked good doing it. Uh, pinned Barrett, which was interesting. 
that's not going to keep him around. Um, so we'll have to see. You know, is this building towards uh, Ziggler siding with Shane? Are we going to see uh, Ziggler interfere at WrestleMania somehow? Final thing to mention about that is Sheamus was okay. Uh, there was reports that he'd got injured uh, over the weekend, but uh, he competed in this, so yay. Sasha and Becky against Naomi and Tamina. Uh, just not utilising the talent, are they? You know, you've got Sasha who's red hot and they put her in a squash tag match. The only purpose of this match was to have Charlotte come out and just look strong. Um, as we were just saying with Sheamus, Charlotte is okay. So um, we will see that triple threat, Charlotte, Sasha, Becky at WrestleMania as planned. Um, Charlotte looks great as well, by the way. You know, she was wearing uh, just like normal attire, like black jeans, black top. Um, this, this heel persona is perfect for her. New Day versus Y2AJ. This was my second favourite match of the night. Uh, I thought it was really, really strong showing. Um, I know a lot of people would say it was the match of the night. Um, but it was good. Uh, I, I thought the New Day promo at the start was a bit of a ramble. Um, I was kind of glad when Jericho interrupted and came out. Really good match. Uh, Big E legitimately just killed AJ Styles on the outside. Just hurled him against the barricade. And then obviously uh, New Day win, uh, keep the titles, and Y2AJ then implode, which is perfect. Um, was I bothered? Absolutely not. You know, this is a team that I didn't care for anyway. I thought Styles should have been a single star all along. Bruce versus Kalisto, solid match. Um, it was a real shame that Breeze didn't win. It wasn't for the title. Breeze could have picked up the victory here for me. Um, Kalisto picks up a win. And I've got to talk about the Ryback promo. This is the worst promo I have ever seen. Uh, hence why I started with him at the start of this video. It was awful. It was too long. It was not scripted. He, or if it was, I don't know what the hell he was talking about. Uh, he was going on about how the big guy defeats the little guy. And how Robert Downey Jr. is a little guy. And... Ryan Reynolds is a little guy, is he saying that? All in one monotone, without... Think about Dusty Rhodes' promos and, and how passionate he was. Um, think about Rowdy Roddy Piper, think about The Warrior. Think about The Macho Man, think about these great promos. I urge you to watch that Ryback promo back and tell me it is not one of the worst of all time. It borderline annoyed me because I just think there's people on the indie scene that deserve that spot. And if he's not good enough to do a promo, passionate promo, and get across the points that he wants to make about how dominant he is and, and show a bit of passion and show a bit of aggression, he doesn't deserve his place on the roster. Get rid of him. Get someone else on there that can do a promo. This is the big leagues and Ryback doesn't deserve to be here. Followed that up with Axel against Ryback. Social outcasts are flat. Uh, they're not. They're not connecting, and that's a real shame. So I had high hopes for them at the start of the year. The match was just largely forgettable. I wasn't into it. Ryback won. I, um, whatever. That left us with the close, and that was Ambrose against Wyatt. Um, some really good talking points in this. It was a really solid match. Probably the third best match of the night. Um, I was really enjoying it. I did tweet actually that it felt like a mid card match. Because, um, you know, it's hard to invest in Bray Wyatt these days. But the longer it was going, the more I was getting into it. And uh, just a real shame that, you know, lights go off and then the Wyatt family appear and just ruin everything. Bray needs to go on his own now. You know, he doesn't need the Wyatt family. They make him look weak because they always interfere. Out came Hunter. Uh, obviously, he was going to beat down on Ambrose again fantastic stare down between Bray and Hunter. Loved that. That was one of my real highlights of Raw. And then Ambrose getting the best of Hunter, which, as we all know, means that he won't win uh, come Saturday at Roadblock, which I don't think any of us really were expecting him to. Unless he can pick up one of those count-out DQ victories. No way he wins the title this Saturday or Sunday. Can't remember when it is. Thanks for watching. Massively appreciate it. Hope to see you again next time. See you later.